Well, we want to get into the word of the Lord this morning, and uh, we're continuing on the life of Joseph, and uh, in Genesis 49 verse 22, uh, Israel is prophesying over the life of Joseph, and uh, remember by this time, Joseph had faced a, a series of problems, a series of trials, a series of tribulations, he was attacked, he was hated, like Joseph himself actually mentioned this morning. And uh, he was persecuted. He was thrown into prison. How many of you feel like that this morning? <laughs> Very persecuted, faced a whole lot of problems. No one wanted to believe you. No one wanted to believe in you. And that was the life of Joseph. Uh, but when Israel is prophesying over Joseph, he's saying that Joseph is a fruitful bough. That word bough is the word son. And so we spoke extensively about sonship. That this is who we are in Christ. We are the sons of God. Uh, and so he is a fruitful son. A fruitful son by a well. His branches run over the wall. And so when Israel looked at Joseph. He saw something. He identified something. He was able to see in the realms of the spirit. And begin to, to, to look at the life. And look at the, the legacy of his life that he was able to consistently live on the earth. He also saw the source from which Joseph drew. Because remember, he was, he was abandoned. He was all by himself. Uh, he was sold as a slave. But Joseph was connected to something. And that which he was connected to was very evident in his life. It was easy for someone to identify. And so... Uh, <clears throat> This is what, what Joseph is saying. Uh, this is what Israel is seeing. And so he's looking at the life of Joseph and he's seeing the, the, the fruitfulness. He's seeing the impact that Joseph has had on the earth. And so uh, he begins to notice that Joseph is living a life in the spirit of God. That Joseph has had several encounters with the word of God. And so he's speaking over Joseph uh, this this particular prophecy and so we are at a place now where we're talking about a fruitful son by a well a well is a place that gives life it gives sustenance a place of spiritual encounters a place of covenant a place that symbolizes refreshment now we all need to find this well in our lives we have to find this well and when you find this well you must become the well and so this is where we are at the moment where you now must become the well. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And so this is the accusation that the Lord is making that, that my people have committed two evils. Number one is they have forsaken me. And how have they forsaken me? They have forsaken me by not drinking off me. Because it says, yeah, the fountain of living waters. So many of you know that Christ is the fountain of living waters. And it is evil not to drink of him. It is evil not to be a partaker. And so you can come into environments like this and still not drink. Come into environments like this and still not be a partaker, still not heat. Like Anna would go to the temple every year and the bible says she will not eat and she will not drink therefore she was barren she had to become a partake of the environment and so this is the accusation the lord is making and he's saying here yeah, and yun themselves cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water now remember water is a consistent picture of god's word and so the structures that we build does not allow us to retain the water and last week I dealt extensively of why we have to retain water, retain the word of God. That you can receive the word with joy and gladness, but when you go out, that word dissipates, it disappears. Uh, it, it doesn't allow that word to grow us, to build us, to establish us. And so you have to take responsibility. And so there can't be broken edges in your life. The Bible says, he who keeps himself, Satan cannot touch. You have to build the edge. When, when God gave Adam purpose, he said, tend and keep. That word keep is to edge about. You have to protect it. 
You have to guard it like when, when Joseph knew how to protect the seed that was in Mary. Uh, you have to become a master at that. You have to become skilled at that. And so when we talk about edges, you have to learn how to protect the seed. And this is why our lives have to be constructed and built in a certain way. Where you protect God's word. Do you know that when you leave the meeting, you have to be very mindful of what to talk about. You can't just blab your mouth. You can't just say what comes to your mind. Because you're protecting something. When you leave this environment, how many of you know the worst things can happen to you? Hmm? You have the silliest of arguments that, that, that begin to exalt itself. Something so small. Something so small, small. Like why, did you, why didn't you put water for the dog? The dog is alive, praise God. <laughs> see, see it from that side. And so you kill the word, you kill the seed. You have to edge, edge the word. Then you have to meditate on the word. You have to keep the word. And so you can't listen to just one message. You've got to listen to it consistently. So that that word that you have heard, you edge it. You, you, you allow that word to come to pass. You allow that word to be fulfilled. Uh, and so you have to ensure that you understand the word. That's what you spoke about last week. He who hears and understands, he will produce. Your level of production is based on your ability to hear and understand. So you can hear the word but not understand it. And so this is why God places someone so that he can make you understand God's word. Amen. Explain it. Break it down so that you don't forget the purpose that, or the intent of God's word. And you have to protect God's word. Amen. Which is also to edge about. So this morning I want to conclude this part of the series. Now in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. The Bible says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of this age to come. So the Bible is saying here now, once you have been enlightened, how many of you have been enlightened by, 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 by the word of the Lord? How many of you have tasted now, if you go through this room, we all have got testimonies. Testimonies of how God broke through for us. Of how God delivered us. Of how God set us free. Uh, how many of you know that your life has gotten better? Yes, you may have complaints and you may have issues. That's part of life. But the reality is God has kept you. In fact, everyone seated here this morning has overcome COVID. That makes you a legend. The reality is God has preserved you. God has, has kept you. You have become partakers of the spirit of God. How many of you remember encounters that you've had with God? Maybe when you were young, as you were growing, but, but you felt the Holy Spirit. You knew that this was God. You knew that this was God. <laughs> encounters with God. And the Bible says, have tasted the good word of God. How many of you have been blessed by God's word? Sometimes you were so down, you were so out, but you opened the scriptures, God spoke to you. The scriptures jumped out at you. When you were sitting in, a, in an environment and you were, you, were, you were going through some stuff, the good word of God lifted you. The good word of God gave you hope. It breathed life into you. And so when you have become a partaker, when you have, have, have been enlightened, you can't turn back. You can't abandon what you have experienced in your life. In fact, we, money can buy you many things, but it can't give you certain experiences. And so when you taste of the goodness of God, you can't go back. Amen. You can't go back. You have to continue. You have to push on. You have to, to, to go further. And so we are living at a time where people have become very weak in the church. And say so when I say weak, everything becomes a major, major problem. Where you need to go for counseling, you need to go for this, you need to go for that. We don't allow the power of God's word to, to work in us. To, to, to allow the word of God to affect our lives. Help us to grow up into him. 
help us to grow into him. One of my friends posted something and uh, he was saying, you don't know how to exist and live until we have encountered, uh, we have had an encounter with him and his word. Life is meaningless until this point. Amen. What a powerful statement, Pastor Malcolm Nair. And uh, I was just reading this thing and I said, no, this is so powerful. We don't know how to exist and live until we have had an encounter with him. And his word, life is meaningless until this point. And so you pursue your passion. Uh, you, you, when you pursue your passion, you pursue it until you come to your purpose. So the purposes of God are fulfilled in your life. And this entire series is to bring you to your purpose. To cause your branches to run over the wall. How many of you like to come to that place? Amen. It's a powerful place to come to. So when you take the two walking on the road to Emmaus, these two had, when they had this encounter with Christ and his word, hey, they were immediately stood up and found their purpose. Now those encounters are very important. When Christ is led out of the scriptures, it must push you into your purpose. And so understanding the spiritual position, uh, position and living this life, this is where the key is. That this life in the spirit is because it, 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 when you have encounters with the spirit of God, the spirit of God is life-giving. Life-giving. And so many people go to church because of what they can get. They want to touch, they, they want to experience things, they want to feel certain things. But, but when you realize you're a son of God living with purpose, everything changes. You don't come because of what you can get. You come because you understand that you are a partake of something far greater, far bigger. That your existence on the earth is not just because of yourself. But you realize that you don't live for yourself, you live for another. Live for another. And this is what becoming a well is all about. Now in John chapter 7 verse 37, the Bible says on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now many of you know that is available for you today. Amen. How many of you know that you can stand up and cry? If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, believes in the scriptures, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. God wants to impart us into the lives of his sons. Amen. He wants to impart us. You impart something into someone and they now will go and, and do the same. Amen. They will go do the same. In Psalm 64 verse 4, the Bible, Bible says, There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Amen. Psalm 65 verse 9, You visit the earth and water it. You, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, and so you have prepared it. Now I'm saying to you, this river is inside of you. Amen. This river that I'm talking about is inside of you. We know that the river is Christ. Revelation 22 will talk about a river that is crystal clear. That is Christ. How many of you believe Christ is in you? Amen. Acts 2.28 For you have made known to me the ways of life. And you will make me full of joy in your presence. So this is the gift. This is the gift. You know that you are the gift of God. You are the gift of God. God is in you. God is a fountain of, 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 of living water. Christ is the river that flows in and through your life. Amen. Amen. Why does God place you on the earth? He's placed you on the earth as a gift. That through you, you have made known to me the ways of life. The life of God is locked up inside of you. 
the ways of God, the nature of God, the attributes of God is locked up inside of you. And as you begin to live with understanding that I am God's gift on the earth. God's gift on the earth. How many of you like to become, function as God's gift? Amen. How many of you like to receive gifts? Who doesn't like to receive gifts? Right? We all like to receive gifts. How many of you get excited? Excited. I remember when we were early married, I had a gift, I had a van, I had a box. In that box, I had some stuff. So when I picked up Chantel, she saw what was in the back and she's asking me, what's this? I said, it's a gift for you. <laughs> gift. And she was excited, asking me, what's in the box? What's in the box? I said, no, it's a surprise. When you get home, you'll, you'll see what's in the box. And I put toilet paper in the box. <laughs> sure, she was very disappointed. But her face lit up and she knew it was a gift for her. So I didn't want to, to, I wanted to be modest. I didn't want to say the gift is standing in front of you. <laughs> but, but your presence, everything changes when you receive something. Come on, you can say, no, I'm not into gifts. I don't worry about gifts, etc. But what happens to you when somebody blesses you? When somebody gives you something? When you experience love or the benevolence of, of someone over your life? What, what happens to you? Hmm? It's like when somebody buys you something that you were asking God for, etc. Something happens to you. Hmm? Now, how much more? Knowing that you're a son of God, God is in you, you are the well of God, the waters of God flows through you, and God has placed you on the earth to become a gift. Amen. To become a gift, and so when you understand you are the gift of God, every part of your life changes. You come to understand their very existence on the earth changes. That means you, you, you see life differently. You're no longer living in darkness. You will never, ever live for yourself again. Your eyes open, your ears open to spiritual activities. So you don't go somewhere because you're looking for a breakthrough, you're seeking a breakthrough, etc. No, you live your life to become the breakthrough. Amen. You live your life to become the breakthrough. Wherever you go, there is an awakening that must take, take place. The light bulb has to come on. Whether there's load shedding or not. The, the reality is you, you need this bulb. You need the switch put on. That this is who you are. This is who you are. And so an ordinary day turns into an extraordinary day. How many of you like those experiences? Where you, you leave home in the morning on an ordinary day. But something supernatural happens along the way. Where normal is turned to out of this world. Now that must become daily experience. Amen. Daily experience. You, you, God wants to bring us to that place. Where we live in the natural but always walking in the supernatural. Amen. Now let's go to John chapter 4 as we close this morning. <laughs> John chapter 4 we're going to read verse 4 onwards now the story about this woman that comes to the well we all know very well I didn't expect that to rhyme we all know the, the story very well how many of you have been like this woman in your life Every one of us has been like this woman. Where we needed, we needed an encounter. Hmm? We, we, we needed our lives to be altered. We needed our lives to change. Come on now. Huh? At some point in your journey, we all came to this well. Where we needed something. And so, when you study your life, there's always been a moment where there was something unique that happened. 
particularly when it comes to spiritual things. Am I right? And so, we've had our moment. How many of you remember moments in life? Trigger moments. Right? So, when you, when, when you see life like that, God, you've been good to me, you've been faithful to me, you have set me free, you've delivered me, you have brought me to this place where I am. Brought me to this place. Now, once again, we can all testify of his goodness. We can testify of his mercies. But do you know that you can't always be on the other side? You can't always be on the other side. You can't always live your life wanting a touch. Wanting a breakthrough. Wanting a deliverance. Wanting healing. Wanting whatever it is that you are trusting God for. You can't always live from that place. It's like the woman that wanted a healing because of bleeding for 12 years. The uh, only thing that she desired was to get a touch from God so that she could be set free. And after she was set free, there's no mention of her in the scriptures again. And so once you get what you want, you continue to live your life uh, and that life becomes a life for selfish gain. Selfish gain because you got your breakthrough, you got what you wanted, you are blessed now, you're prosperous now, or whatever it is, but you got what you were, see, what, what you were longing for. But when are we going to live from the other side? When are we going to live from the other side? And that is a position that Christ is coming from. Amen. That when people encounter you, it becomes life changing, life altering. When people encounter you, they will never leave the same again. Now, we live in a world where people love to complain. People complain about everything. Now, let's be honest, you can't really complain about load shedding. It's part of life now. Water shortages. It's part of life. You can't control about, the, you can't complain about the petrol price because you've got no control over it. The bottom line is as much as you complain, you're still filling fuel. <laughs> you're still going to where you need to go. You can't complain about, about, uh, about the price in Nando's because you're still eating. You're still satisfying yourself. So we complain about things that we can't change. And so how is God going to use us as the gift on the earth? Say, how is God going to use us? See, gift of the givers is good. They're doing an excellent work. They're now aware that uh, the disaster took place, helping all the earthquake victims. But they're doing it with other people's money. They're not doing it with their money. It's a big difference. Big difference. It's, it's easy to do things with other people's money. But when you're using your own money, everything changes. Everything changes. So when you take your life, and this is what we want to conclude with very, very importantly this morning, is that you are the vessel. You are the conduit. You are the portal. You are the voice that God is raising up for a time such as this. This is why you are existing. This is why you are existing. The problem is we don't see it that way. The problem is we just want to continue business as normal. And when you look at life, you realize, hey, I am so busy. That's my greatest frustration when I sit back on certain days and think of how tired I am, how busy I am, and how ineffective I am. I didn't fulfill the purposes of God. Now that's the busyness of life. If you don't learn how to overcome that, you will waste the best part of your life. And people told me, hey, when you get over 40, you go to bed normal and wake up with pains. You don't know where they came from. 
you know, for a few years I'm living with this. <laughs> yeah, your body goes into shock. Now, they say after 50, <laughs> sudden death. So, you don't know. So, while you have the energy, serve God. Become what God has called you to become. Now, let's go over this thing very quickly. In John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says he needed to go through Samaria. It's a very important word, they needed. Needed, right? And so, you have to work out where you have to go through. There are certain places that God has ordained, designated for your life. There could be relationships, it could be, you know, uh, 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 business, it could be a lot of things, but Jesus needed to go through Samaria. That means it was ordained for him to go through this place. Now Samaria, remember, is, is a place of mixture. It's, it's the lowest caste of people on the earth at that time. On the earth at that time. They were the poorest. They were the least respected. But the Bible is saying that he needed to go through this location. And so, the thing that you have to develop in your life is walking closely with the Holy Spirit. You see, you will never find your purpose without the Holy Spirit. Never. If you don't have encounters with the Spirit of God, if you don't build your life to hear the voice of the Spirit, you'll never go through where God wants you to go through. Right? It's very important that, that you are led by the Spirit of God and allow God to consistently lead you. And so in every part of life, in every leg of your, of your, of your journey on the earth, how are you hearing the voice of God? How are you led by the Spirit of God? Or are you functioning just by yourself? Are you functioning by yourself? Are you, are you functioning in isolation and independence? Because you know you can't live without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is connected to your sonship. Romans 8, 14. Those who are the sons of God, these are led by the Spirit of God. And so there's a consistent leading by the Spirit of God when you understand and connect to your sonship. And so you realize every day how much more and more you need the Spirit of God. And so when you take the Matthew 28 principle like we prayed this morning, the principle is to go into all the earth making disciples. It's a commission that comes from God. It is purpose that Christ has given to us. And, and like Chantel alluded to the word amen, it means now that, that must, you must become a partaker of that. You have to receive that instruction as if Christ spoke to you personally. Be it unto me as you have spoken, as you have declared, as you have decreed, as you have commanded. And so when you look at your life on the earth, every one of us has to come to this place. Amen. Every one of us has to come to this place. And so I'm praying through the series that you would locate where you need to go through. Where God is placing you. Where God is positioning you. So that his glory, his will, his purposes will be, will be released in your life. Amen. Verse 5, the Bible says, So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sika. Near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Now Joseph's well was there. And Jesus therefore being weary from his journey. Thus sat by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Now I want you to think of this area. Number one is Samaria means guardianship. We know it's a place of mixture. We know it's a place of low caste. We know that they are not respected. And so Jesus is at this location and the location means guardianship. Now when you look at the life of this woman, you see very clearly and evidently there is no fathering in this place. There's no guidance in this place. 
that everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes therefore no one took time with this person to say to them this is not the life that you are supposed to be living this is not the life that you are supposed to be leading amen and so we live in the time when you look at where we are living on the earth now this is what's happening do you know that it is accepted for you to live with someone without marriage it's accepted is not okay with the scriptures so you go test the waters check whether it's green whether it's good and you decide after a few years no no let me move on from it let me move on from here that's not life and so parents today don't have a say parents are not allowed to father parents are not allowed to mother because their voices bounce back but you don't understand the times you don't understand that 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 we are modern no there's no such thing as modern you either love holy or you don't you either love from god's word or you don't and so we just accept anything this is mixture this is mixture who's going to stand up and tell people the truth now no one wants to do that because you still want to be friends with people you want to have good relationships i can't offend i can't say certain things so look at where we are going as a people now there's one aspect one aspect so it's easy now okay let's go to joburg let's get a flat let's love and let's 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 just carry on as life as normal who's going to say to those children that's not how you're supposed to live your life now as a parent i will never accept that never I'd rather disown the child than than just accepting nonsense and say but what are we going to do no no god is giving you hands god is giving you things around you i got a ipad <laughs> you can't accept nonsense can't accept nonsense your child can't come to you today and say to dad look here your son now i don't know why i don't like girls and you can't say shame boy i feel for you you understand what i'm saying where is the cricket bat <laughs> where is the cricket bat because you can't stay quiet yeah. mixture mixture we were at the airport and and myself where the fnb lounge and i'm looking for the toilet and i'm asking this lady say no free for all here i <laughs> know there no male toilet or female toilet but The, the the reality is this is where the world is going if we don't realize god placed us on the earth for a time such as this to become the voice of god then what we living for what we living for everyone wants to do what is right in their own eyes no one wants to live from the word of god anymore no one wants to live from the scriptures this is the problem we have and so this woman now you realize has the form of godliness form of godliness but she is having a a nice life on the earth not committed now so hey i got married five times i'm not going to make the same mistake you should have said that after the first one <laughs> living life to suit you can't work that way can't work now jesus has to go he needed to go through that now when you look at your life don't live with blinkers 
Number one is you can't be having the same problems. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. He'll convict you of sin. He'll tell you, no, no, this is what you have to do. So when you look at the earth right now, we are loaded, loaded with problems. I mean, a person will think nothing of throwing anything out of the car. Not realizing it's unrighteous to do that. That's the society we live in. And so, uh, she's doing what is right in her own eyes. And the word sika means drunken. You can be in a drunken state. Now, you know that when a person is drunk, they think they're not drunk. How many of you met someone that admits, I'm drunk? No, they always find it necessary to prove the innocence. Am I right? Try, try telling a drunk person, hey, you are drunk. No, they get activated. Then it, it impairs the vision. So you think you are seeing right. Why do you think so many affairs happen when a person is drunk? They think they're looking at their wife. <laughs> But it's not their wife. <laughs> Somebody else's wife. Right? But you think now. You, you think. You see, a, a, a person that is drunk is unstable. That's why the policeman asks you to get out of your car. Walk on the line. He wants to see whether you are straight or not. And so... A people that are in a drunken state have no control. No control. They think they have control, but they have no control. How is it a drunk person is so quiet, generally? But when they are drunk, they become loud, abrasive. How is that possible? How is that possible? How many of you are feeling thirsty right now? <laughs> so, there's Jesus. He's on this journey. The Bible says he's tired. Now it's happening at the sixth hour. Six is a number of flesh. A pl uh, flesh will speak of, of tiredness. It will speak about the flesh. It will think. It will speak about frustration, etc. Because it's in the sixth hour of the day. Now all this is taking place at that time. The picture I'm painting is this is the world we live in. This is the world that we live in. And so Jesus being tired, being frustrated. Now how many of you, when you see things, you get tired and frustrated? You know that we're coming to a point, like someone mentioned the other day, um, HIV. In our country, no one talks about it anymore. Yet we have the highest levels of death through that. When last you heard of an awareness campaign for AIDS? Part of life, no? When you heard back in the day someone got murdered, hey, your, your hair will stand up. Hey, you see this. Now when you hear someone got murdered in your backyard, you don't think about it. You don't lose sleep over it. Why? Part of life. When you hear about child abuse, Right now, how many of you are so moved when you hear about child abuse or it's, you become numb to it? Think, think about it. Think about it. We are living in society where we have become frustrated, we have become uh, bitter, we, we have become tired of helping people. Become tired of helping people. And so God wants us to function from that place. So your body is tired. Your body is weary. But you know you have a spirit. Spirit doesn't sleep. You know that while you are sleeping, you can still communicate with God. You know that while you are fast asleep, God can download and refresh you and refire you. For his purposes. Now, if we are always tired and always on the back foot, something is wrong. 
something is wrong that means you have to, you're missing out on life that comes from god and so this is important now the bible says verse 7 the woman of samaria came to draw water jesus said to her give me a drink for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food then the woman of samaria said to him how is it that you being a jew ask a drink from me a samaritan woman for jews have no dealings with samaritans <coughs> Now you notice that this person is living from the earth living from the earth so you know now and we're not going to talk about the cultural differences or racial differences we're not going to talk about prejudice but the reality is she is seeing from the earth all she can see is all these problems you seeing the picture now we live in a world that is far worse the times that we are living is worse than what she was living when you talk about prejudice when you talk about racism and we talk about all of those things we we have it very difficult where we are but prejudice and 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 uh, you know caste systems are it's a global problem that's a global problem and so this person is living from the earth because she's only seeing in an earthly realm based on her response because she's like saying how can you ask me for water what gives you a right to ask me for water don't you know what we are surrounded by and so we all surrounded by problems now if we also live from that place how are we going to function as god's gift on the earth if we see the same way if we understand the problems the same way how are we going to make a difference how are we going to have impact that means when you see another human being are you seeing color or do you see outside that come on now. the problem is what 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 do you see how do you see how do you see and so when you when you look at the situation here this person is living from the earth living from the earth but colossians 3 2 says set your mind on things above where christ is and not the things on the earth romans 8 will tell us to walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh Now those who walk according to the flesh they live by the flesh they live for the flesh we are called to live a separated life when you separate your life you are now able to consecrate your life unto him amen so we are seated with him in heavenly places you live on the earth but you seated with christ how many if you believe that So your sight comes from above. You don't see what other people see. So if you are still seeing people after race or color, I'm saying to you this morning, you are not saved. You don't know God. I don't care how well you sing, how well you prophesy, but if you see race, you're not saved. because if we are in Christ there is neither male nor female so you're not prejudiced towards women you don't treat them badly you don't treat them as inferior because of the gender it's the same with color it's the same with 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 status you don't treat someone better because they are more qualified You don't treat someone better because they've got more money. It's the same thing. The same thing. God has not called us to live from the earth. We are called to function from above. Therefore in Christ you live, you move and you have your being. Amen. Remember I'm talking to you about you becoming the well. You becoming the gift. Now if everyone lives from that position how is the gift going to work how is it going to bring change 
how is it going to bring deliverance amen how is it going to bring difference make a difference so when you look at all of these things hey the setting is there setting is there therefore very quickly in matthew chapter 6 verse 5 to 13 the bible says when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites right let me tell you very few people will make it in jesus church for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners corners of streets that they may be seen by men jesus has a problem with certain groups of people a short day say to you they have their reward so those people the hypocrites that jesus is calling and hypocrite simply means actors that's what that word means actors means you 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 are playing something that you're not right playing something that you are not you are living a life that you are not and so jesus is saying they have their reward now what do you think about this very carefully because many people live life for reward if you give me this i can do that right we live we have that mentality that mindset that mindset has to be broken that's why many people live their lives so that one day they can go to heaven that has to be broken your reward is not heaven your reward is christ amen your reward is christ and so the bible says but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut the door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly is not your father who hears get this thing right your father who sees now we want god to hear our prayer he's teaching his disciples how to live not how to pray not how to pray so he's saying here and when you pray do not use vain repetitions as the eden do now jesus is taking it one step further from hypocrites is calling them heathens for they think they will be heard for their many words so jesus is not moved by that he says therefore do not be like them is bringing a distinction here he's saying this is what i see i don't want you to assimilate into that way of life or culture or thinking he's calling them into a separated life a different life he's saying here for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him then he says in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your kingdom come your will be done as i mean your will be done on earth as it is in heaven then it says give us this day our daily bread that means every day every day god wants to load you he wants to pack you with daily bread daily bread but if you don't get that first part right our father who art in heaven hallowed would be your name your kingdom come now see the church has lived their life going the other way opposite direction he is teaching them to live from the heavens now we live like the samaritan woman with all the problems earthly problems this is why the earth is in chaos why do you think the church is so irrelevant lacking power lacking dominion because we 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 are living in reverse gear here opposite he's saying here and we and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever 
Amen. That's the prayer. This prayer has to be lived out. It has to be lived out in our lives. Verse 10, Jesus said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now, look at the confidence of Christ. Confidence. Look at how bold he is in his identity. He knows what he's carrying. This morning, what are you carrying? What are you carrying? Now, this is how you test it. You are talking to a doctor. You're talking to a cardiologist. Is the top cardiologist in Africa. And you are yourself. How many of you are happy to be yourself? Hmm? How would you talk to him? How would you present now? Rivers of living water. How many of you are bold enough to talk to him? How many of you are confident enough to talk to him? Come on, very few. Very few. I think after I preached 500 messages, I wasn't ready to talk to someone like that. How's that? But you realize, realize, as time goes, who you are in God, what your purpose is, what your function is, that God sent that doctor to you. Because he needed what you've got. Rivers of living water. Amen. Needed what you got. Almost done. Then a woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well? Drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock. So, Remember, Jesus is talking about spiritual things. The natural man cannot understand spiritual things. And when you, when you look at the story now, you realize this woman has got no idea about what Jesus is talking about. She knows about Jacob, the well, his father's son. She even got the father's son wineskin there. She's got everything. Don't understand. Now, there's the danger for us that we must never become puffed up. Never think because God has opened our eye to something that everyone else is, is, is useless. Everyone else is insignificant. God won't send anyone to you. If you don't live as a broken vessel, one who is contrite, nothing God will give you, he'll open your eyes, he'll eventually shut your eyes if you don't adjust your position. The day you think you're better than someone, I'm telling you now, the heavens will shut to you. That's why what we spoke about yesterday in our prayer, pride, pride always goes before the fall. Always. If you have got word in you, you will learn how to humble yourself. If God never opened your eye, you'll never be able to see it. Never. You notice Jesus is not carried away and he's trying to overemphasize, over pump himself up. No. He's realizing he's talking to a person that has not received salvation. You begin to see how nurturing he is, how kind he is, how loving he is towards this person. Is able to, to ascertain very quickly where she is at. Where she is at. Amen. It's a very important point. Don't say I'm a gift, I'm a son of God, I'm all that. But you lose heart. You become numb to certain things. Ministry can make you like that. Can make you like that. It can make you lose feelings. 
That's when you see a doctor, you wonder how come he can just sign that certificate. No feelings. The nurse is seeing that that child is screaming their guts out. They don't care. They're not yet even hearing the cry. They're very focused on what they have to do. The kingdom of God does not work like that. Does not work like that. The kingdom of God is heart to heart. You can't lose feelings. You can't come to a place where you are so numb. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Amen. Jesus, look at how, he, how much of time, how much of love. He's not lambasting this woman. Hey, you foolish one. You can't understand. But look at how he deals with the Pharisees and scribes. Are you the, the, the leader? And you don't understand what I'm talking about. Right? So, Jesus doesn't approach his people like that. Doesn't. Doesn't function from, from, from pride. 13, almost done. Jesus answered and said, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whatever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This encounter becomes a life-changing encounter. You see, this encounter with Jesus is a trigger moment in our life. Hmm? How many of you have had trigger moments? Uh, you become the point of contact. You become the point of contact. You become the, 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 that, that moment of encounter where everything in the life of this person is about to change. So how many of you it's a powerful place to come to? Hmm? Hey, you, you should say to God, Lord, I want this. I want this. Let me say to you, you can do a lot of things. But when you see the eyes of someone open to the purposes of God, there's nothing greater. There's nothing greater. In life, God can give you a lot of things. God can take you to places. God can show you things. Why does God show you these things? Why does God allow you certain things? To remind you, to remind you, to keep you grounded, to keep you humble, to show you that his purposes are greater, greater. And I remember a trip to Brazil, the things that we saw, you can't put into words. But I mean breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. If you look at your history, you say, wow, this is like impossible. But this is what God does. But then you realize there's things more greater than that. More greater than that. Because look at verse 15. This woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. That means the heart is open now. Heart is open. Eyes is open. Years is open. There's a thirst that she has. There's a woman that went to get water like every other day. Not expecting anything different. A normal life. And all of a sudden, her heart is open. God is sending you somewhere. But you are complaining about the home affairs. How bad the services are. The person next to you is waiting. Their moment. A time of encounter. Come on now. Huh? See if this message doesn't change your life. Nothing will. Because you have to realize the seriousness of the time. Seriousness of the day. That this is who you are. You can't always be the Samaritan woman. You have to grow up from that now. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. Woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have said well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. The one 
with whom you now have is not your husband. In that you have truly spoken. Amen. As man was about to get married. And so on his wedding cake, his favorite verse is 1 John 4, 17. Right? Who wants to read it? 1 John 4, 17. And so uh, he tells the, the baker, please put this verse here. It's my favorite verse. 1 John 4, 17. And so he gets to the wedding now and he, he's looking at the cake. And the cake doesn't have 1 John 4, 417, the, the cake has John 417. Hey, now this guy's upset. His favorite verse is not there. Who's got the verse? No one. 1 John 417. Read, Panesh. Right. Now, when he opened the Bible now to, to read, he got the shock of his life because he turned to John 4.17. John 4.17 says, for you have had five husbands. <laughs> the one that you're with now is not your husband. How many of you will get married under that circumstance? <laughs> So there's, there's Jesus now, right? Almost done. You notice the gifts of the Spirit is working. Hmm? He, the, the, the gift of, of, of prophecy is working. The word of knowledge is working. You know that you can't do ministry without that. Not possible. Because this is there to enable you and to assist you. And the Bible says you must ask God. Now, we sometimes are asking God for things we don't need. How many of you have asked God for spiritual gifts in the last week? Honestly. Got one. Spiritual, Lord, I want spiritual gifts. I want the gift of prophecy, the gift of word of knowledge. Be greedy. He's saying ask. You can't work without that. You can't work without that. Imagine you ask God for this gift. He creates the scenario for you. The scene is there. And this thing starts to work. You don't even know yourself. Why am I asking these questions? Amen. See, it's important we ask God for these things. Because gifts are designed to flow through you to minister to and, and benefit others. The gift is not for you. So you can prophesy over yourself. How many of you like to do that? I prophesy over my own life. I say you are God's chosen. God's anointed. You're good looking. Tall. Encourage yourself. Like Pastor Ralph says, he gives himself an offering every now and then. <laughs> no one's going to bless you. Bless yourself. But the reality is, gifts are as a design to it. It's to flow through you. Help you minister. This is not for pastors. This is for everyone. We all have equal access to this. And who is the giver of these gifts? God is the giver of these gifts. As you find that secret place. When God sees. Hey this person I can trust. This person I can release this to. This person because... Let, let, me, let me read this to you, right? To function effectively in the power of the Spirit, you have to be other people, centered and not self-fixated. The operation of your spiritual gift should not be used to develop or endorse your spiritual credibility, image or reputation, bringing attention to yourself. It is not about your image. It is about building the image of Christ in one you are ministering to. Amen. When using our spiritual gifts to minister to, the, to others, may we be motivated by love 
and seeking their well-being not seeking to to boost our spiritual reputation before people 1 Corinthians 13:4 love does not seek its own amen love does not seek its own you can't minister without these gifts you need the gift I pray as you leave this meeting that you will start to desire earnestly these gifts. Ask your father. Ask your father. Why is it when we use scriptures before you can ask your father knows what you need or why do we always make it about money? Make it about clothing, make it about other things. God is expecting you to ask what he asked you to ask. why so you can live a life full of purpose live a life where you are now satisfying the demands that is on the earth living your life for the benefit of another amen come let's stand as we pray this morning